Okay, so let's go to section 4.3 and talk about logarithmic functions. And logarithmic functions are the inverse functions to exponential functions. So logarithms undo exponentiation. So let's first talk about the definition of a logarithm. And the way we read this is y equals the log base a of x. And it means the same thing as a to the y equals x. It's just a different way of writing the same information. So the one on the left is called the logarithmic form. And the one on the right is called exponential form. And you can go back and forth between them. So let's see how to do that. First, we're going to write log base 9 of 81 equals 2 in exponential form. So the base is the subscript. So base 9. I find the exponent by itself on the other side of the equals. And that equals the number inside the logarithm. So 9 to the power of 2 equals 81. That's written in exponential form. So now let's take 16 to the 1 half equals 4 and write it in logarithmic form. So my base is 16, the base of the exponent. The exponent goes by itself on the other side of the equals. And the 4 goes inside the logarithm. So 16 to the power of 1 half equals 4 means the same thing as the log base 16 of 4 equals a half. So there's two bases that come up the most. Um, the natural logarithm has a base of e that we talked about previously. And then common logs are with base 10 less common now when they were first um, working with logarithms the base 10 was the most common one so it came to be called common log so if you don't see a base written it's understood to be base 10. then the natural logarithm we say y equals the ln of x means the same thing as e to the y equals x. So you can write this as log base e of x, but because it's used so much, um, this special notation was come up with. And for us, ln kind of doesn't make sense for natural logarithm. But the people who developed this notation spoke Romance languages where the adjective comes after the noun. And so it sounded perfectly fine to them to say logarithm natural and develop this abbreviation of ln. You'll hear people say ln of x. You'll hear them say natural log of x. A few people say lin, but it's not very common. So the logarithmic function is the slowest growing of the ones we study, grows slower than polynomials. The exponential function grows the fastest, so it kind of makes sense that the thing that's the inverse would grow the slowest. So remember that the graph of inverse functions are reflected about the line y equals x. So on the left in the green, I've added the exponential graph, and then the blue, the blue is the logarithmic graph. So recall that for the exponential functions, the domain was all real numbers. So for the log function, the range is all real numbers. You can get every y value you want as an output for the logarithmic function. And then we have the range of the exponential function was y values were positive only, so 0 to infinity. So the domain of the log is positive numbers only, 0 to infinity. So if you're looking at y equals a log base a of x, 
The x's have to be positive, but the y's can be positive or negative. So make sure, uh, oh, let, let me show you on Desmos how these graphs look. So if I have 2 to the x and then the log base 2 of x, they're reflections of each other about the line y equals x. And then let's see what happens if I look at 3 to the x and y equals the log base 3 of x. And those are reflections about the line y equals x also. And so also I want you to notice the difference between 2 to the x, the red graph, and 3 to the x, the blue graph, the exponential graph grows faster if the base is bigger. And then let's see about the logarithmic graph. Let me make this one a different color. So the log base 2 grows faster than log base 3. So things work in reverse when you're in the inverse land. So let's um, practice using your calculator and make sure that you can get negative 4 for the answer to this first example and 1 half or 0 0.5 for the second one. And if you have calculator questions, make sure and ask now. Don't wait till the test next week. Okay, so then we have properties of logarithms. These are all important properties that help you solve equations and simplify work. So let's look at them one at a time. We have the log base a of 1 is 0, and it's because if we write it in exponential form, well, of course, a has to be to the power of 0 in order to get 1. So that's the first property. The next one we have is that the log base a of a has to be 1 because a to the 1 equals a. So if you have the log base 3 of 3, that's going to be 1. Log base 5 of 5, that's going to be 1. Okay, and then we have the third property says... So I have the log base a of a to the r, that's going to equal r. So one way of thinking about this is that the exponential and the logarithm cancel each other out. And that's not technically correct, but I don't mind if you think of it that way. As long as you don't say that to a math person, they will object. Because it's doing and undoing. It's technically not canceling. It's doing and undoing. It's like putting socks on, taking socks off. So then the next one just goes in the opposite order. It says, well, if you do the log first, and then you do a to the power of, those also undo each other, and you get back to x. Okay, then comes the product quotient and power properties. We're going to use these a lot. And the first one says if you have the log of a product, you can rewrite it as the logs of each individual factor added together. And this is for no matter how many things you have multiplied together in the logarithm. You can spread them out. So the one on the left is condensed. And the one on the right is expanded. So then we have the log of a quotient can be rewritten as the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. And all of these properties can be proved based on exponents. So it shouldn't be surprising that multiplication and addition go together because when you have exponents and you have multiplication, they add, and logarithms are exponents. 
Okay, and then the third property that we're also going to use a lot is the one that says, if I have the log of something to a power, this power can come down into the front and multiply the logarithm. And this again is a property of logarithms. So when you use any of these properties, you're not doing calculus, you're doing algebra. So all of these properties get used right to left as well as left to right. So let's first use the properties to write a sum or difference as a single logarithm. And this is most useful when you're solving equations. So these are the rules you've more likely used. So for A, we're going to have 2 times the ln of 5 times minus 1 half ln of 25. And we can't use the minus to do anything yet because we have these multipliers in the front. So we first need to use this last property to write this as the ln of 5 to the power of 2 minus the ln of 25 to the 1 half power. Now we can use the quotient rule and do the ln of 5 squared over 25 to the 1 half. Well, that's the ln of 25 over the square root of 25, which is 5. So this simplifies down to the ln of 5. So you can see why you would want to simplify. So then let's do b. And we need to put the multipliers back up as exponents so that we can use the logarithm product and quotient rules. So now the first two are added, so I can write that as the product of the arguments. And then we can combine those and we have a minus, so we can write this as u squared w cubed over v to the sixth. So this is written as a single logarithm now. Okay, so then the other way we use the properties is to spread out the logarithm as much as possible, and this is most useful for computing derivatives. So we're going to use algebra to say, if I have the log of a quotient, I can write it as the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. And then I'm going to rewrite this square root as a power of 1 half. So then I can see that I can use that last property to have the exponent come in the front as a multiplier. And notice that this is not the power rule. It doesn't work like the power rule. It's a property of exponents. So I haven't changed the quantity at all. I'm just rewriting it. And then I see that this first term has a product in it. So I'm going to have 1 half times the log of x plus the log of z minus 3 log z. And then I'm seeing that if I distribute the 1 half, I'm going to have some like terms that I can combine. So I need to do that. So I'm going to have 1 half log x plus 1 half log z minus 3 log z. So the log z's are common like terms. And I'm going to have 1 half log x minus 5 halves log z. So the reason we would want to do this is this what we started with would be horrible to do the derivative of. 
this is going to be super easy to do the derivative of. So let's do one more example of expanding the logarithm. So I'm going to have the ln of 6m to the fifth n cubed, and this is to the one half power. And I'm going to use the property of logarithms that says I can bring the exponent out to the front as a multiplier. And then I have a product inside the log, so I'm going to have the ln of 6 plus the ln of m to the fifth plus the ln of n cubed and one more step I can bring the exponents down in the front And this is my final answer. Okay, so I'm going to stop here so the movie doesn't get too long, and I'll make another movie continuing on.